In this video, I'm going to discuss the revenue recognition rules for long-term construction contracts. And I think it would help to contrast or first discuss how we normally recognize revenue. And traditionally, we recognize revenue at the point of sale once we've met our separate performance obligation, right? If you go to the revenue recognition video, you'll see what I mean by the separate performance obligation. So this is the traditional thing. But if you think about it, for a long-term contract, there's several performance obligations that are being met. Uh, think about it, the construction of a bridge. Uh, there are things like, you know, setting up the foundation. There's things like uh, laying out the metal. I don't know. I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a constructor. But those, those separate things can be considered a performance obligation. So for long-term contracts, and that's, you know, a contract that extends beyond the operating cycle of a company, normally more than a year, if we can reasonably estimate the progress, then we can recognize some of the revenue as the work progresses as opposed to waiting until the end. So this approach is referred to as the percentage of completion method. And if we are able to estimate the progress along the way, usually done based on total costs incurred, then we can use the percentage of completion method to recognize partial revenue every period until we finish the project. Now, the alternative is for you to wait until the whole thing is done and then you recognize the full revenue and the full expenses at the end that would be the completed contract method but we for long-term contracts we normally use the percentage of completion method simply because the company is working to meet some of those performance obligations and thus should be allowed to recognize some revenue along the way so Here's the percentage of completion method. The best way I can think about it is, is as a three-step process. Okay, we use the cost to cost basis for revenue recognition. In other words, we estimate how much of the total cost I've incurred, and that'll tell me how much of the progress I've made. So step number one, the first thing I'll ever do every period is, I will determine more or less what percentage of the job I've done, the percentage complete. And this is nothing more than summing up all your costs that you've incurred to date and dividing them, which, by the way, this is easy. This is in your records. You don't have to estimate anything. So you sum up all the costs you've incurred to date and you divide it by the estimated total costs for that project. And this one may be a little bit trickier because you don't know exactly what the total cost would be. And sometimes the total cost estimate changes and that's okay. We do the adjustments of changes prospectively as a change in estimate okay step number one once i know what percentage of the project i've completed then i can determine the total amount of revenue that i can recognize to date in other words the recognizable amount how much revenue can i recognize to date based on what i what i think the t estimated total revenues will be times the percentage that i've done already in other words, what percentage of the total revenue can I recognize? Well, the percentage that you've completed. And that's what this is. Now, this will give you an amount that you can recognize to date. So if you've recognized some amounts in the past, that's where you might have to subtract those amounts that you've recognized in the past. And that's what this is. Revenue recognizable to date minus what you've recognized in the past gives you the revenue that you can recognize in the current period easier way to look at this from a T account perspective, the blue, the recognizable amount, this is the ending balance that you would like in that account right here. The revenue that you've recognized in the pre previous periods, that's the beginning balance. So what you can recognize during the period is that difference or the plug amount. And you'll have to do this analysis every period, whether that be monthly, yearly, whatever the case may be for your company. Now, this is, um, I put in this account revenue uh, just for purposes of illustration, but you know, we know that revenue accounts are closed at the end of the period. So for long-term contracts, we use some other account called construction in progress for that purpose. But you can think of it as just the revenue amount being uh, tracked in that construction in progress account. Let me give you an example. 
think we need to look at some numbers here so we can really understand what's going on. So here's a here's a project. Here's a project uh, that is going to bring in $3 million in revenue. We estimate at the beginning of the project that it's going to cost us $2.1 million. And we estimate it's going to take us three years. So the first year, at the end of the first year, I analyze and I sum up all my costs and I determine that I've incurred up to the end of the first year, $500,000 in costs. And I think, I estimate that I'm gonna incur an additional 1.6 million to arrive at a total estimated cost of 2.1 like we projected from the get-go. So the idea is simple. If I've incurred 500 out of the 2.1 million, then I've completed 24% of the total project, 500 divided by 2.1. Meaning I can recognize 24% of the 3 million revenue being $720,000. So to date, up to this date, I can recognize $720,000. What have I recognized in the past? Zero, because this is the first year you analyze or the first period. So this period, I can recognize the full amount. So that amount of 720,000 in red would be like the desired ending in ba ending balance. So look at our T account right here. This is period X1. I started with zero. That's this zero right here. I would like an ending balance of 720. That's the blue. So technically here, it's easy. It's 720,000 that I can recognize. And that's what this credit right here is, the revenue of 720 uh, that I can recognize. So these are the journal entries, but I'll talk about this in a minute. Don't concentrate on the journal entry yet. Let's look at the whole analysis first. Next year comes around. Total cost incurred to date, 1.3 million out of 2.2 because I think now that I'm going to need 900,000 to complete this project. So my estimate of 2.1 just went up to 2.2 and that's okay. That's not a big deal. I just simply account for that in the, in the fraction right here. So to date, I've done 1.3 million out of the 2.2. So to date, I've done 59% of the project, meaning I can recognize 59% of the 3 million, which is 1,770,000. $1,770,000. Now, keep in mind, this is what I can recognize, the amount recognizable to date. But if I've already recognized some in the past, I did that last period, 720, then this period, I only recognize $1,050,000. And again, that's the revenue right here. Finally, last year comes around. I have incurred 2.2 million as estimated out of the 2.2 million. I don't expect to incur anything else. So the percentage complete obviously is 100%. And I can recognize 100% of the 3 million. That's 3 million right here. I've already recognized cumulative revenues of 1.77 million, the summation of these two. So at this point, I can re recognize the remainder revenue of 1.23 million. 1,230,000. And if you analyze each period, notice how I do this little T account. X2, we started with 720. We want a desired ending, uh, ending balance for construction in progress of 1.7 million. That's what this is. So my adjustment is 1,050,000. Period X3, same thing. We started with 1.77 million. And we're going to end up, we want a desired ending balance of 3 million. So the revenue recognized is 1,230,000. This is the way you would do it every single period. You would analyze it in this fashion. Now, here's where it might get a little tricky. We, we are, every time that we incur cost, we're going to include it in this account called construction in progress. So notice how if I incurred $500,000, I'm going to put it in construction in progress, and then I credit accounts payable, wages payable, or anything else that I pay in, per, in terms of that construction. Okay, so we're just going to simplify and leave it in AP. All right, here's where it gets a little tricky. Then I recognize the revenue of 720, like we said here, but then I expense those $500,000 of cost incurred so that I can 
separately put in the gross profit of 220 into the construction in progress account. I know this sounds kind of weird, but in general, here's how it works. Your construction in progress account accumulates total cost incurred plus gross profit recognized. And why do we do that? Well, we do that because this is where we're tracking the amounts of expenses versus revenue let me be more clear this is the place where we're uh, accounting for the expenses incurred versus the revenues recognized for each period so we need to since we're not finished with this project we need to track all those things both the cost and the gross profit until we actually get paid fully at the end okay so you're gonna have to just accept this for a little bit and once we've once I show you a little bit more, then we can do a full circle on why we do this account. But just understand that every period, we recognize the revenue, we expense the cost incurred for the period, and then we include the gross profit, the difference between these two, as construction in progress. All right, so here's something that's really important that I want you to keep in mind. I gave you the minimal amount of information here for you to be able to only do one thing and that one thing is recognize revenues or the one thing would be recognize gross profit okay but technically we're this is this information is what you need to recognize revenues and expenses what do i mean by that you have no information here at this point you have no information as to how much we've built the customer nor how much i've collected from the customer and the reason i did that is on purpose so that you can see that the revenue and expense recognition for these long-term contracts is independent of how much cash you receive from the customer or how much you bill the customer. In other words, even though I'm recognizing revenue of $720,000, this is revenue I can recognize for gap purposes. This might not be necessarily what I contracted with the client in terms of billing them. This is my gap recognition amount. Now, what I build the customer and what I receive from the customer, that comes from the contract. So let me bring that additional information in right here so you can see what I mean by that. So here's additional information. Let's say that for that same period, For that same period, even though I incurred $500,000 in expenses, even though I recognized revenue of $720,000, I ended up billing the customer for only $400,000. Again, this is independent of what I do here for purposes of revenue and expense recognition. And that's something that tricks up students a lot. So you need to, if you can keep these two thoughts separate, this kind of uh, pro uh, problem just is so much easier, in my opinion. All the three-step process that I do here does not rely on any information on how much you build and how much you collect from the customer. And if you can keep that separate, you'll be all right. Now, notice how I'll build the customer for some amount each period. So that goes to accounts receivable. And then here's the account. So this is the billing in the construction or billing in progress that I use to offset, okay? And in the future, you'll see that this is gonna offset with construction in progress, this billing uh, in progress, uh, okay? So it's like a weird account, but once we close the loop here, you'll understand what I mean. Now, when I collect cash from the customer, that's just cash and accounts receivable each period. So that this is this part right here is not complicated. The only tricky thing is this billing in progress account, but you'll see how what I how I use that. So notice how over the three year span. Oh, this is wrong. This should be two point nine million. My bad. Let me correct this. Okay. So notice how over the three year period. I'm gonna build the customer a total of 3 million, just like in the contract. Let me see if I can bring this 
you know, we this is a project for three million. So this over the three years sums up to be three million. It's just done over separate periods, right? And over the life, I will collect from the customer three million as well if all goes well, of course. There, you know, assuming no uncollectability here. And so what I'm putting, what I'm putting in here and building in progress is three million. So why am I telling you this? Let me center this. Because if you go back, you'll notice that in the construction in progress account, you're going to have the total of three million in there as well which includes the cost of $2.2 million. So maybe I should delete it from here. Hold on. So the construction in progress account, if you sum up these right here, this is $2.2 million, the cost. And then on top of that, you put in the gross profit of um, $800,000. Oops, didn't like that bear with me here so this billing in progress account is going to be offset with this construction in progress account at the end and that's how we're able to track each period able to track the expenses minus, you know, the revenues minus expenses so that we can recognize income on the income statement versus what we bill separately. But at the end, it all ties in. Okay. Uh, here at the end, once I collect from the customer, once I, you know, finish the project and, and give the customer their, uh, their, whatever it is, building or whatever it is that we were doing, then I zero out uh, billings in progress and I zero out construction in progress and they both should be 3 million. Now, what ends up happening is that during each period, we got to analyze the net of these two balances, construction in progress versus billing in progress. And if this is a debit account, this is a credit account. So if for some reason at the end of each period, you have a debit balance between the two, then it's a current asset. Here it's stated right here. And if on the other hand, you have more credits than you have debits, then you would have a current liability. This is how we track how much we've spent throughout the period versus how much we've billed throughout each period. And I know it seems a little quirky, but it allows us to recognize revenues and expenses for each period separately from uh, what we bill the customer. And that's practical, okay? So overall, let's look at this real quick. When we do these types of projects or accounting for this type of project, the calculation is as easy as one, two, three. Okay, you determine how, what percentage you're done. That determines how much you can recognize. And then based on whether you've recognized in the past or not, that's what goes in the books. The amount, the net amount of that. <clears throat> as you are incurring cost that goes into the construction in progress and as you are recognizing revenues and expenses in other words recognizing gross profit that also goes into construction in progress separately fully separately from this thought process is the accounting for the billing and the billing occurs as follows and it goes into billing in progress then at the end of this whole thing once you're done the construction in progress and the billing in construction or billing to date account billing in progress will equal the same amounts and that you just X out or cancel out all right hopefully this video helps you understand the accounting for long-term construction contracts which can be tricky but my advice to you is keep the billing and the collection separate from the revenue recognition and you should be okay in doing those calculations